A very warm welcome into Sports Talk with Theo Dorsey on this Thursday evening. He's John Barron. I'm Theo Dorsey in South Georgia. Let's talk sports. It's the final week of high school basketball here on Sports Talk. After two full months of basketball coverage, we will leave you tonight with end of season awards and of course, a very special guest. Yes, and of all the coaches to grace the Sports Talk set, none have had any career, uh, none have had as many career wins as dear for Windsor's Gordy Gruel. The leader of the Knights is in the studio tonight to share the wisdom he's picked up in over 40 years of coaching. Gruel is, has over a thousand career wins in his 35 years at Albany at Deerfield Windsor. Hear from him later tonight, but first we give out the much anticipated Sports Talk Award. Well, thank you, John. And let's tip off the show by giving out the individual awards. We usually do one Shining Star of the Week, but for the finale, we'll do two Shining Stars of the Year. First up, we're going to head out to Edison for the boys' win. <laughs> County's Rayshon Williams is your boys' WALB Shining Star of the Year. The senior averaged 23 points, 8 boards, and 3 assists for the Cougars this season. His campaign to return to the state title game was cut short in the Final Four, but the Cougars ended with a 28-3 record. That means in his four-year career, Williams has won 104 games and lost only 17. He's also won a state championship and three region championships in his decorated career. The shining star of the year will continue his basketball journey at the University of South Florida in the fall. Over to the girls' side, this was Another tough one, as much as the boys' decision was as well, but when it comes to stuffing a stat sheet, not many ladies in South Georgia did it as well as Nadia Marshall. And Nadia Marshall left it all on the hardwood for her senior campaign. The senior averaged 19 and a half points, 10 boards, and four and a half steals for Bainbridge. The Lady Bearcats' season was ended in the Sweet 16 as they ended 23 and six. Marshall going to continue her playing career at Gulf Coast State College in the fall as well. Moving on to D1. All right, Theo. Now time for the team awards. And this year's squad goals of the year winner is the Thomasville Bulldogs. Thomasville just won their first ever basketball state title in school history. Now in the past, they've come really close by knocking on the door a few times. But this year, they broke down that door with a 35-point victory in the state finals against Vidalia. The closest margin in the playoffs for the Bulldogs was in the first round when they played against Swainsboro with a victory of 56-50. to Now since that game, and this is not including that game, they went on to win the following rounds with an average of 25 points seven points and average 70.4 points a game. Now that average did include the Swainsboro game. The largest win was against Spencer in the Elite Eight with 39 points. So certainly made a statement on their way to the finals and for the finals in the state playoffs that's what the force to be reckoned with was for the Thomasville Bulldogs. They would not be denied the title this time. So congrats to the Thomasville Bulldogs, our squad goals champion of the year and your 2008 AA Boys Basketball State Champions. Well, that's amazing, and I can imagine that they're going to be high on the final rankings, John. Let's take a look at the final Sports Talk South Georgia basketball ranking is as I predicted, maybe because I wrote these up. Thomasville atop the charts for the boys as the season ends as the AA champs. They're followed by Calhoun County at 28-3, Coffee, who ended their season in the Elite Eight at 20-8, Westover and America Sumter round out the top five, both of them ended their seasons earlier than people anticipated in the Sweet 16, and Cook also made the Sweet 16. They finished in the honorable mention spot 19 and 10. A look at the girls, America Sumter, the top ladies, the queens of the hardwood. America Sumter finished 24 and 8 in the final four. Valdosta made the Elite Eight, they finished 22 and 8. Coffee to the Elite Eight as well in Class 6A. Fitzgerald made it all the way to the final four, finishing with a record of 17 and 6. Terrell County comes in at fifth, 25 and five. The ladies from Dawson also cracking the final four. And Pelham made the Elite Eight. They get the honorable mention spot at 27 and three. Now to the fun part of the show in the section where you get involved. We have five options for the Showstopper Play of the Year, hand selected by the sports team. Hop on my Facebook page, Theo Dorsey, WALB News 10, and you're gonna have a chance to vote for the top one. Option number one from Thomasville, state championship blowout win in the Macon Centerplex. Vontarius Woolbright up top to Reggie Perry. Boom! The one-handed slam, one of six dunks in the first half. The Ville went on to win big for the state title. Can they win the showstopper of the year? 
react with love on this post if you think so. All right, option number two, a late January region bout between Tiff County and Colquitt County. Tiff County's Blue Devil, Monte Taro, shows off his range with a step back three pointer. He nailed it plus the foul. Check it out again as the Blue Devils created just enough space for the four point play. React with your wow on Facebook to vote for this play. Option three, an early season game in November, Monroe at Lee County. Monroe trailed by one point with a few seconds to go. Alyssa Jones misses the free throw, but check it out. Steals the pass on the outlet and at the buzzer, boom, wins it on the road. Look at that and react with ha ha to vote for Jones's game winner at the buzzer. I'll see that buzzer, Vader, and raise you another one. Option four, Lowndes at Colquitt County in February. Closing seconds of the first. Diamond Hall ends it in style. Check out the ball handle and the step back. As you take another look, you can say the reaction with Sad if she brought the v Cats to tears with this shot. That's right, and your final option, option number five, Westover, round one home opener. First play of the game was a backdoor alley-oop, Michael Eisler Jr. Making it look easy. Check out Jordan Brown, number one, going to be the decoy showing in the middle as Eisler flies over the top. React with angry to vote for this one because it was an angry slam. Voting lasts until Tuesday at 5 p.m. Now, we've got plenty more fun here on Sports Talk. Those were the awards, but of course, we have a very well-decorated coach coming into the studio, Gordy Gruel, who will battle me in Sports Talk trivia right after this break. Welcome back into Sports Talk. I'm John Barron. That's Theo Dorsey. And here's our guest, Gordy Gould. Right now, he is the head coach of Deerfield Windsor's boys basketball team. You see the setup. It's time for trivia. But first, Theo runs through the coaching resume of Coach Gruel. That's right. Well, the Indiana native played baseball at Valdosta State. His first basketball coaching job kept him in South Georgia at Worth Academy for four seasons starting in 1975. In, 90, in 79, excuse me, he took his talents to Edmund Burke before finding his home in Albany at Deerfield Windsor for the past 35 seasons. Gruel has coached boys and girls. He has over 1,100 career wins, but zero wins so far in Sports Talk Trivia. So as we welcome you into the show, Coach Gruel, I wish you luck and you're, you're <laughs> starting your career here in trivia. I'm probably going to need it. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Coach. Well, here you go. I'm going to go ahead and explain how this works. It, it is called Theo versus Everybody, and that's essentially what happens. Theo takes on every coach that we bring into the show and challenges them in trivia. Now, each question will be worth one ball, and if you get the question correct, you get to put it back into the vase, and if you answer first, you have to ring the bell and have the answer. Now, the first three will be multiple choice. I'll give you two options, and you have to pick one of them, all right? And then the all next right. six, you'll have to think of the answer by yourself. Are you ready? No, ready. No. There you go. I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> all right, here we go, Coach. All right, in the first NCAA tournament, how many teams competed, eight or 16? Oh, I think I'm going to have to give it a <laughs> Eight or 16, Coach? 16. The answer is eight. Eight, let's go. I would have got that. Oh, okay. I didn't get it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now number two. UCLA has the most men's basketball titles. Who has the second most with eight, Indiana or Kentucky? Kentucky. That is correct. Let's get it, man. Uh, let's yeah. Get it. Bluegrass. I already got there's, that. There's <laughs> you would have got that. <laughs> All right, question number three. Now, this is the last multiple choice, okay? Which Ivy League school ended its 66-year drought of not making it to the tournament after finally winning the regular season title back in 2011-2012 season? Harvard or Dartmouth? Harvard. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> 50 -50 chance. <laughs> that is correct. And Dartmouth is like at number 56 right now. Oh, so they're, still they're, starting to, they're starting to come up, up to it, all right? Okay. Now, the score right now is 2-0, to zero, Coach. Give him all right. early lead. You Give got him a head six start. more. <laughs> <laughs> You've got six more to go, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, these you have no multiple choice, okay? So you have yeah. to think of the answer by yourself. Mm, okay. All right, question number four. Villanova was the lowest seed to ever win the title back in 1985. What seed were they? Oh, man. I feel like I recently heard this, too. Mm. <laughs> Twelve. Uh, it was eight. Oh, okay, yeah. Wait, wait. Do I get a ball? No. no. <laughs> you got to tell oh, me. Oh, so you just got to guess. Give it a shot. No cost. Yes. Oh, no, no, no. Yes. Okay. On those, okay. you get a second chance. I got you. Answer, I got you. On those, you get a second chance. <laughs> all right. Question number five. In the history of the NCAA tournament, only once has all four teams, number one seeds, excuse me, made it to the final four. Mm, I remember this. What year was it? 
recently. It was recently. Recent, yeah, it was okay. recent. I can't. I couldn't tell you. It, w it was within ten years. I'm gonna give you the first ring. 2012. Oh, I thought he was gonna say eight. Two, the answer was 2008. Oh, okay, okay. And that all was right. the first time and the only time yeah, all four seeds. I think that was made the Raymond Funk year, wasn't it? I think. I don't I think know. So. We'll see. All right. Austin Carr has held the record for the most amount of points in a single game in the NCAA tournament for almost 40 years. What number is it? 48. <laughs> 61. 50, okay, 61. 61. Okay, yeah. yeah. Uh, maybe right. I need to go a little lighter on these. <laughs> <laughs> That's a really direct thing. I remember Austin Carr. Yeah. What's what, what school? Notre Dame. Notre Dame? Yeah, I was okay. Say. Yeah. All right. I get any points for them. Nah, for yeah. <laughs> half a ball. You get um, half a ball. <laughs> half a ball for them. Okay. Fair All enough. right. This team has the record for the most amount of points in a 1990s second round game against Michigan. Which team oh. holds that record? You can say the abbreviation, you can say the name. Oh, I know it now. Oh, man. It's Loyola. Oh, Loyola. Okay. I thought it was definitely. Okay. All right, ready? Question number eight. The winning team gets a piece of the net to take with them after they win. What is another part that they get to take as well from the gym? Piece of the net? Mm-hmm. So, like, when they win, they get a piece of the net as well as another piece. And I can cut the backboards down. Piece of floor. Piece of the court. Okay. All right. <laughs> All right, there we go. We got it started. Okay, that makes There's sense. There's only so many things right. you can get. Yeah. It's, it's a learning curve. I'll okay. have to definitely make sure I put these next time. Maybe not so yeah. many dates. Yeah, so. <laughs> All right. <Yeah. laughs> All right, last question. You can even it up. Actually, I think this oh, is the this last is question. This is worth two. So yeah. you can win it or okay. I can go. All yeah, right. Here we go. Last question, number nine. Kentucky and this team have met a total of ten times in the tournament. What is the other team? I'm gonna Duke. No. UCLA? No. It's Marquette. Wow. That's so that's so random. Okay, well who comes up with these? <laughs> this guy came up with it. <laughs> yeah, he's gonna make him play it. Yeah. <laughs> Next week I might have to turn yeah, the tables yeah, on him or something. Yeah, there you go. That, yeah. Well, I'll take my victory happily. Uh, uh, the toughest, Great job. Yeah. The toughest sports yeah. talk to I'll practice up for next time. <laughs> that was my fault. I'll, and we I'll will. my own questions. <laughs> you can bring your own questions. Yeah. So we'll, have, we'll talk to Gruel about his coaching career, less about trivia now, more about the man behind all the wins right after this break. Welcome back into Sports Talk. I got with me here Gordy Gruel of Deerfield Windsor. He's been on the bench at Deerfield Windsor for 35 years. He's been in coaching over 40 years. And today he joins the Sports Talk set and blesses us with his presence, some of his knowledge, and hopefully some tips, even though I just beat him in trivia. Well, I was gonna, yeah, I, I, there's any more trivia questions <laughs> we can play. Yeah. Luckily, I've had a little bit better luck in coaching than yeah. trivia. So. A lot of big, better luck in coaching. No wins in trivia, 1,118 career wins as a basketball coach. And I want to start there. Uh, you, you've, you've coached many of teams. You've, you've seen many of players go in and out, graduate. I'm sure you've seen some of their kids at this point. And for you, what does that number that you're looking at right there, 1,118 career wins, what does that mean to you? Well, it, it means, I think, that I've been consistent. I've had teams that, uh, that have been consistent over the years, particularly at Deerfield. And uh, I've had a lot of kids that uh, haven't wanted to settle for mediocrity, that mm -hmm. uh, have wanted to excel and have been willing to work at it to get there. So, you know, you never get into it. You really don't have any idea whether you're going to be successful in this profession or not. So. Uh, it, it certainly, it means a lot to me to be successful as it does anyone. Everybody wants to be successful in what they do, but, uh, uh, it, I think it's something that's going to mean a lot more to me uh, after I'm through, uh, right now as you're going through it while you're just trying to get to the next season and reflect on last season. So, uh, uh. I, I've enjoyed all the years, uh, all 43 of them, and uh, the last 35 at Deerfield have really been special. Definitely very special, and you, uh, you've you had many of things happen since you've been at Deerfield. you got uh, 28 total region championships, seven state titles, but I want to talk about two things that's happened in your career that had to be special, and I want to see if you can mince them out a bit for me. you got the court named after you uh, at, at the basketball gym uh, at Deerfield Windsor. If you guys didn't know, it's called uh, Gordy Gruel Court, or is it Gruel Court? Yeah. I, that's big. And then also right here, Albany Sports Hall of Fame inductee in 2009. These two things, uh, I know, like you said, when you're going through it, you're not thinking about all the accolades. You're not thinking about the milestones. But they, they occur, and people notice. When these two things happened, what were the emotions like from you? 
Well, a lot of emotions go through you. You're very thankful for all the people that, that helped you get to where you've gotten to in your career. And uh, uh, the, list, the list of that is many, way too many to, to mention. But uh, uh, I also, they had a, you know, they had a get together for me and, and uh, uh, when I won my thousandth game. And I got to see a lot of my former players, many of, many of them who are in coaching. Mm -hmm. that uh, have been very successful and said some very nice things. And, and when you realize that you've had an impact on lives. And I think that's, you know, when you first get in coaching, as I, as I said, you really don't know if you can do it. And wins and losses are very important uh, at, at that time. But then you really, as you go through it later on, you understand that's really not the reason you got into it. And it, it's, uh, you know, the most important thing to me is what kind of young man or young lady uh, the kids that I coached were when they left the school. Hopefully they were better off than when they came in. So uh, many of them have uh, excelled, not just in, certainly not just in basketball, but uh, uh, have become leaders in this community as well as others. So I think that's the thing I'm most proud of. Got to be uh, proud of that, especially when you get a chance to see them when they come back to the city and, and, and do certain events or even come to speak to you. Uh, can you speak to, so you, you also, you coached, uh, boys and girls seasons at, at the same time for 11 years throughout your career at Deerfield Windsor and I want to know as a head coach how tough is that not only consolidating those schedules I'm sure you had a lot on your plate but also trying to lead these successful teams to the wins that you did bring them to I mean you had a girls team and boys team it's not like football and baseball where it's two different seasons it is it is tough and I was obviously a lot younger back when I did that <laughs> uh, one of our, I did it for, I think I ended in 96. That was the last year that I did it. I'd, I'd done it for nine or 10 years in a row right there. And then uh, our girls coach left and I really couldn't get the person that I wanted to take that important role in our school. So I said, well, I'll just do it again myself. Well, yeah. I haven't, I hadn't done it since 96. Mm -hmm. And this was like 2002. Uh, so I found out how tough that was and how much older I've gotten. So uh, it liked to, those two years like to kill me, even though I really enjoyed coaching the, the girls again. It, I love coaching girls. You yeah. know, people have asked me, you know, well, what's the difference between girls, coaching girls and coaching boys? You have to treat them different. You really don't. I, I, I never expected any less out of my girls teams than I did my, my boys team. Uh, I think the, the biggest difference, if somebody asked me, the difference between the two is girls try to do exactly what you tell them to do because most of the basketball they learn is from you. Guys, they're watching college, they're watching yeah. the NBA, they think they can play at that level when they're in the ninth grade, you know. <laughs> so, you know, they, they, uh, they do a little bit more on their own. So, uh, but, it, but both of them are great in their own way, and I love coaching both of them. And speaking of love coaching, I know you had to enjoy your, your tenure coaching Andre Young. He played there from 04 to 08, probably the most decorated boys basketball player in Deerfield Windsor history. Over 2,000 career points, holds the record there. 471 career assists, 498 steals, 199 three-pointers, a Albany Sports Hall of Fame inductee in 2016. Can you speak to what it was like watching that young man grow? Well, yeah, yeah he, he made a pretty good coach out of me for the four <laughs> years he started for me. And, uh, at, you know, he had a great career at Clemson, scored over 1,000 points at Clemson. But, uh, you know, he was – he came to me uh, – he came to – his dad and uh, Coley and Andre came and talked to me before his – freshman year he was five foot four inches tall mm. uh, little bitty guy and uh, uh, he not only grew as in, in height but he grew as a person and uh, became a great leader one of the most beloved kids not students uh, not basketball players that we've ever had at our school and uh, he was special that was a special team uh, that those 2008 or 2007 2008 team and I'm enjoying watching I can't take my eyes off the highlights <laughs> there but uh, he was just a special player and one that, uh, you know, you don't get those very often. And uh, he, uh, he made us awful good and made everybody around him pretty good. Definitely so. And also pretty good was the team you had this year. When we come back from this break, we'll speak to what you guys had in this 2018 season. We'll see you right after this quick message. Welcome back to Sports Talk. We've, co we've talked to Coach Gruel about the past. Now let's talk about the present. Your team, the Knights, went 19-6 and six this year, bounced from the Elite Eight of the GISA Tournament, but you got a lot of returners. Let's talk about the future of these Knights. Well, we do. We've got four starters coming back from uh, the, this year's team, and, uh, uh, you know, we had, we had an outstanding team this year. We lost two seniors, but uh, I'm really looking forward. This kid, this, this group is a very hard-working bunch that uh, doesn't mind getting in the gym and is going to work to get better. So uh, I'm excited about it, and... Uh, uh, I, I can't wait to get started. You know, we take about a month off and uh, we'll get going again. 
Well, we're going to be there the whole way as you guys get going. I appreciate you joining Sports Talk. I appreciate you watching. We'll see you next Thursday night. Thank you for your time.